How's it going, everyone? We have another top 30 visit for the Packers. So in this one, we're going to look at safety out of Oregon State, Katan Oladapo. So Oladapo is currently the 13th ranked safety on the consensus draft board and is currently ranked 158th overall. Uh, for his RAS score, he scored a, an 8.12 RAS score, comes in at 6 foot 2, weighs 216 pounds, did the bench press 15 times. Had a vertical leap of 36 inches and a broad jump of 9 feet and 9 inches. And ran the 40-yard dash at 4.58. And if we're to look at all the combine results as he did participate in the combine, he currently ranks 12th overall out of all the safeties for the 40-yard time. So not extremely fast, but not one of the lower ones where the lowest one was 4.65. So right there in the middle. Now for his collegiate career, uh, this is initial stat representation is a little misleading as it only shows four years but he's actually been in college for six years all at oregon state so in his first year in 2018 he was actually redshirted then in 2019 he only played two snaps and played no significant role at all so this is why he didn't register any snaps and there's no snaps on this one but in 2020 so pretty much his third year he started to get some big playing time so in the year 2020, he played six games, had 26 total tackles, two and a half tackles for loss, two sacks, one pass defense, and one forced fumble. Then in 2021, played in 13 games, had 69 total tackles, five and a half tackles for loss, one sack, one interception, and eight pass defended. Then in 2022, played 13 games again, had 80 total tackles, four tackles for loss, two and a half sacks, six pass defended and then in his final year played 13 games again had 74 total tackles three tackles for loss one sack two interceptions eight pass defended and one forced fumble so he's had a pretty productive career especially once he started playing every game over on pff sides for their grades in the year 2020 he had a 49.1 defensive grade 58.5 run defensive grade a 66.6 .6 tackling grade an 84.2 pass rush grade and a 42.2 coverage grade. So pretty terrible in his first year getting some decent playing time. In 2021, had a defensive grade of 73.6, 64.1 run defensive grade, a 67.7 tackling grade, 62.7 pass rush grade, and a 77.5 coverage grade. Then in 2022, kept increasing that grade. Had a 79.9 defensive grade and 78.6 run defense grade and 84.7 tackling grade, 89 pass rush grade and a 74.2 coverage grade. Then in his final year, these stats are really good. So he had a defensive grade of an 88.3, run defense grade of 91.3, a tackling grade of 78.3, pass rush grade of 67.1, and a coverage grade of 84.4. So a really good final year for Oladapo. And he kind of played everywhere in that final year. He wasn't just a free safety. Like they have him listed as a free safety, but he's more of a strong safety type. So for his time in 2023, he ended up playing 268 snaps as the box safety, 285 snaps as the free safety, and then 192 snaps as a slot corner. So he has a bit of versatility within him, but he's more suited as a strong safety and a box type safety. So what are the pros for Oladapo? So he's a physical safety with very good size and length. Strength is on full display in the run game. Good movement skills for his size, fluid pedal and quick feet in space. Has short area quickness to cover initial moves and routes. High motor defender who quickly closes space on ball carriers. Flows to the ball with good feel and vision. Strong tackler who fronts up ball carriers while driving his feet through contact. Effective blitzer who can blitz from interior and off the edge. And plays the ball well when able to get his head around and locate it. Above average ball skills to capitalize. Now as for some of the cons for him, he lacks the change of direction ability to cover shiftier receivers. Can get rocked on his heels and backpedal at times. Tightness can show up in open field tackling. Has good speed, but will struggle to carry faster receivers deep. Also has difficulty matching crossing routes through traffic. And can panic and face guard at times when downfield, rarely able to play through receivers' hands. 
But overall, from those pros and cons, he's a pretty, it's looking like and sounds like he's a really good, actually, in the box, strong safety type. He shows those strong safety type of skills. And that's kind of what we're looking for with the Packers, because Xavier McKinney is most likely and probably should be our free safety. And all we have on our depth chart currently is Xavier McKinney, Zane Anderson, Tyler Coyle, Anthony Johnson Jr., not going to mess that up again, and Benny Sapp III. So there's a big void currently at safety because really it's just Xavier McKinney who's really our free safety, and we need a strong safety, and especially with him who is mostly an in-the-box, can potentially play slot, and also has some free safety experience. He's got some versatility to him, which I personally like. And for the Packers, when watching his highlight tape, I feel like he's a little bit faster than 5.58. He's probably more towards a 4.5. I'm not saying he's significantly faster, but I feel like he does run faster than a 4.58. And he just brings the heat and brings the hammer. Like he is a very physical safety and he likes to blow up people. He that's not afraid to play as a box safety and get in there in run defense and stop the run, which is something we definitely need, especially since our run defense. And granted, this was the Joe Barry time was pretty awful. So having that type of player, I feel like he would actually be able to complement Xavier McKinney pretty well, especially since McKinney will probably be roaming the center field as a single high safety with him being a box safety. I think that would complement and suit what our defense is kind of aiming to be. But now having said that, the question is if we do decide to go after him and Gutekunst likes him, uh, me personally watching him and seeing a lot of stuff, I like him. But if Gutekunst also likes him, where do we draft him? The consensus draft board, they had him at 158. That's a pretty, that's a day three pick. But there's a lot of people who thinks he's kind of undervalued and actually could be a mid day two or late day two pick, which would put it at late second round and potentially the third round. If he's there available at the third round, I say we take him, uh, especially with considering we would need the safety unless the Packers decide to trade up and get Cooper DeJean because he's not going to fall to us at 25. I think that'd be a pretty good pick for us, and I think he would actually offer a lot to this defense and actually could potentially play for a starting spot early on in the regular season if we drafted him. But let me know what you think down in the comments. If you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and as always, go Pack Go!